CataractCoach.com. Is a toric eye oil acceptable in fuchs corneal endothelial dystrophy? Patient has a low endothelial cell count and central chemistry of about 600 microns. So we can zoom in here and you can see all those gutte on that corneal endothelial surface. Now, luckily, this patient has a relatively clear cornea, and the pachymetry is still 606 microns. So it hasn't gotten to the point where the cornea is 650 or more microns in thickness. And luckily, we can still have a nice view for our surgery, and we can hopefully anticipate that the patient may not need an endothelial transplant in the near future. So we'll fill up the eye with visco glass. You can see we made marks on the cornea at the steep axis, which is a with the rule of stigmatism. We'll make the incision here about 90 degrees away from that. And now we're gonna get our rexes done. And so in a case like this, this patient's had a high degree of astigmatism, a really high degree, um, for many years. And it's equal and symmetric in both eyes. So this is not some sort of distortion of the cornea because even 10 years ago when the patient had a better endothelial cell count, the patient still had about four and a half, five diopters of regular and symmetric corneal astigmatism. Now, why does this patient have such an unusual degree of astigmatism? You know, it's just the variation of human nature. You just don't know. But it's symmetric and stable in both eyes, and the patient's had about the same keratometry readings for 10 years. So we've got nice 10-year uh, records so we can review all this. So we got the nucleus, chop it in half. Now, we want to be very careful here. I'm trying, using very low phaco power, trying to operate primarily at the iris plane or below. I don't want to operate near the corneal endothelium. We're using a good quality dispersed visco elastic here. And so you need to use more than just HPMC. HPMC is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. That's okay for routine cases, but in a case like this, the patient actually does benefit from a higher quality dispersive agent that'll stay around longer. So nucleus is moved pretty efficiently. You can tell we're obviously doing the video at two times normal speed, and we'll clean up the rest here. So in this case, yes, the patient's still getting a monofocal lens, and that's very reasonable. I would not advise, in most of these cases, putting in a diffractive or light or splitting or trifocal lens. Perhaps you could use an extended depth of field lens, depends on the case. But the main question for us is, what's the patient's future? Is this patient going to have issues in the future or not? And I mean by you know corneal issues. Will the patient end up needing a DMEX surgery or endothelial transplant in the future. So there's our lens, that's the toric lens. This is a T9 toric lens. So the lens has six diopters of astigmatism correction on the IOL, and that corresponds to about four and a half at the spectacle plane or the corneal plane. There's that lens. And so we'll go ahead and deliver this lens in the eye. And in this case, I think the patient's gonna end up probably not needing a DMEX transplant in the future, but just in case we've planned for it. And how do you plan it for the lens calcs? Well, you need to add a little to your IOL power. If a patient's gonna have a DMEX surgery, that may cause them to have a little hyperopic shift. So a patient like this, you're better off leaving this patient with a post-op refractive error about minus a half instead of absolute plano if you think they're gonna need a DMEX surgery in the relatively near future in the upcoming years. Now here you can see the pupil came down. So we're just gonna confirm the positioning of the toric lens by lifting up the iris and aligning the toric IOL marks of the IOL with the marks that we already have on the cornea. And so we can see that's in pretty good position. So we can seal up the incision and finish up the case. Now this patient certainly let's quiet the eye down in the post-op period, make sure we don't have too much inflammation and we'll watch the patient carefully. Normal if the patient has a little corneal edema for a few weeks after surgery, again, we can watch it and in all likelihood it'll go back to normal. So yes, you can certainly put a toric lens in a patient who has fuchs corneal endothelial dystrophy, and even if they need a DMEC in the future, you're still doing them right with that toric lens. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on, cataractcoach.com, check it out.